for me, the, the casting was a completely bizarre, totally uh, manipulative kind of situation in that uh, I, I had actually uh, been up for being uh, playing Michael's mentor in a film called The Secret of My Success. And, and, and I, didn't, I didn't get cast because I was too tall. Michael, Michael's 5'6", five, 5'6", six, five, six or something like that, so I was too tall. Do you tall have a for... problem with that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I, I had been, uh, you know, I co-starred co with Clint Eastwood and worked on various other big projects and uh, was in between television and uh, film work playing Stan Laurel and Charlie Chaplin and Groucho Marx at Universal Studios on the tour. And an agent who handles mainly lookalikes called me up and said, uh, I wonder if you know who Crispin Glover is. And I said, of course, I did, I did a film with him at AFI the year before he did the first Back to the Future film. Very quirky, uh, eccentric actor who I liked a lot, even had his number. And he asked if I was the same height. And I said, no, Crispin's taller than me. He's heavier than me. And I said, wait a minute, uh, what are they looking for? And I, and I was told just a, a stand-in photo double for um, a film. And I, and I knew the sequels to Back to the Future were, was in, in the works. And I said, is this for Back to the Future? And you know, the agent said, I'm not at liberty to say. <laughs> I was like, get me in there. <laughs> so I went in and met the ADs, which is usually not how you go about casting. Uh, the ADs like me, talked to Zemeckis about me. Then I went to casting and then read for them. And then I started getting a call to prosthetic fittings at Ken Chase, the original makeup designer's place. Ken Chase. Kenny. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Ken. Real quick, for those of you who don't you know what an AD too. is, why don't you tell them what the AD is? The, the we're assistant talking direct, film talk. assistant director was who I met with. And Ken Chase, uh, award-winning uh, makeup designer, Wild Wild West, and a lot of great, great shows and movies. He is the one who actually told me that I had the role. It was very strange. I, I, was that what the AD did? That, that Ken, Ken was the one oh, who Ken said, Ken, was Ken, Ken, right? Ken said, Crispin's out, you're going to be playing George. I was like, what? And I couldn't fathom, how could they make this film without Crispin? Yeah. It just did not make sense. In my mind, they needed George here and there simultaneously, and I was going to be you know, doubling like Kevin did for Michael J. Fox. And uh, I had done a screen test of the young George prosthetics, at which uh, Zemeckis turned to Dean Cundy, our cinematographer, and said, so Dean, what do you think? And Dean said, I think we got Crispin without the trouble. <laughs> and I was, I was like, oops. What, what did I just hear? What is going on here? And of course, the Universal is run by very smart attorneys and all waited till the 11th hour uh, to call my agent and said, uh, we'd like to offer Jeffrey the role and here we'll offer a minimum scale. And I was like, what? Oh, come on. Anyway, so nonetheless, we worked out a, a, a contract and I went to work the Monday morning not knowing what the heck I was stepping into. It was, it was really uh, giant shoes to fill and I had to step up to the plate and, and in a very odd situation. They had to have Crispin, but they didn't have Crispin. And uh, the makeup didn't necessarily look, make me look like Crispin unless I was far away or out of focus or skewed, but I had studied his screen tests in the previous film, and so I had his physicalizations, and oh, you know, all this wonderful, wonderfully eccentric uh, physicality that he had. And then, and then the voice, oh, ah, 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 you know, getting all that stuff down. And, and you know, I, I had actually called Crispin when I was up for it. I called, left him a message. I said, you know, we work together on this film at AFI with Dan O'Hurley, you know, and if you have any sway, you know, I could use the work. My, my wife at the time was having our second kid and I needed the health insurance. And he didn't call me back until he wanted to sue, until the third film came out. And, uh, you know, he told me sad stories of how he was mistreated on the first film. And, you know, I had heard, while I was hanging upside down, I had a crew member come up to me and say, you know, all this torture was meant for Crispin. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh great, I'm such a lucky guy. And it was really hard. I was kept between sort of a rock and a hard place. They did not want me to promote myself. I couldn't get any photos from the production uh, for, for at least six months after the third film came out. And uh, yeah, a lot of mysterious things happened. I'm very uncomfortable. And uh, Crispin sued, uh, but it uh, never went to court. And they, they gave him three quarters of a million dollars. 